Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my elephant foot vine here. So it has actually been two years since I've done a proper update on this. I did give a brief update about a year and a half ago when I was repotting it, but this plant has actually been dormant now for two complete years. So it was around November 2020 that it was in full leaf last, and basically what happened is around about January, February time, it died back, it went dormant again. As this is a seasonally dormant plant, what tends to happen is it grows over the winter time and then it's dormant during the summer in the warmer months. This time though it's been a lot longer. Normally it would only be a year or just for the summer months that it would go dormant but for some reason this time it was two years that it went dormant. So as I say it died back about January February time then I uh, expect it to stay dormant right through the whole summer. I kept it in my conservatory where it gets really hot in the summertime up to 40 degrees celsius sometimes and so I, I, I gave it those conditions so it would recreate the conditions it gets naturally in the wild in South Africa so it knew it was the summer and then it came into winter again allowed my conservatory to get quite cold probably down to about 5 or 10 degrees and I thought that would trigger it back into growth but for some reason the whole of last winter no growth at all then we came back into summer again and I knew it would be dormant for the warmer months so I was a bit worried this was actually going to be dead and not come back to life but it hadn't started rotting and it was still firm so I was confident that there might still be some life in it I know that these elephant foot vines are quite temperamental when it comes to their dormancy and they can vary quite a lot. For example, although this one on average is dormant once a year and it has a little growth phase once a year, the timing is quite random. Sometimes it starts growing in August, September. Other times it waits until about February till it starts growing. This time it's November that it's decided to come back into growth. So I'll tell you a bit about this plant, where it comes from in the wild. It comes from South Africa and the part of South Africa it comes from is a very stony, rocky area with very low rainfall, it's pretty much a desert area but where it does get its rainfall is concentrated in the winter months in the coldest part of the year so unlike most plants this goes dormant in the summertime and grows in the winter time the way that this survives is it's so dry and hot in the summer it really wouldn't be able to survive very well so what it does is it just completely shuts down goes completely dormant it stores lots of energy in this big cortex at the bottom here which is the giant trunk that it has that also stores a lot of water. It can then, in that dormant phase with all that water stored in its cordex, survive the long hot summer months. Then when the, the rains come back in the winter time and it's cooler, it can then start rapidly growing. And although it's quite low temperatures where it grows in the, in the winter time, it can get a touch of frost and the temperatures are probably only about 18 degrees during the day. It can put on some really quite rapid growth, quickly smother any vegetation near it, climb up small shrubs and trees and then it can get, gather all the sunshine over the winter time and then once it gets too hot and dry again it goes dormant. So I can recreate that a little bit here in Scotland but it's very difficult because when it comes from in South Africa it's much closer to the equator so they actually have a reasonable amount of sunshine even in the winter months. Here in North Scotland it's very low light levels and this only really has its leaves at the darkest time of year but somehow it's always done quite well for me and it's always got bigger year after year and if you want to follow the whole series I'm going to make a playlist and you'll be able to see how small this was when I started it probably about five or six years ago now and it's just been getting bigger and bigger every year and the top growth keeps getting bigger and bigger as well. So there's a few things to say that are different this year to previous years so as I say normally it's every year it it goes into a dormant phase and a growth phase. This time it's been a two year dormancy phase. And so I think the reason for that is the growing point was damaged or died off. I'm not sure entirely what happened. But basically it's always had one or two growing points in the middle here. So you can see on this plant it's always either grown from this point here or from this point over there. And what normally happens is you get one long stem, one really quite strong vigorous thick stem and then that branches as it grows. And you can see the previous year's stems, you can see they get smaller as the uh, the stems are from longer ago when the plant was a smaller plant. But more, the most recent one I think was this one which is particularly large. You can see there's another growing point here as well that had a few of these stems in previous years. And this bit in the middle where there's a few little kind of dry bracts, that was a growing point. It started to grow and then it just kind of stopped. Also some slugs and snails ate the top of it off and for some reason it hasn't tried to grow again from that point. But then what happened is the plant must have lost its growing point so it's tried to create a new one. And so all over the plant there's lots of new growing points starting to appear. So you can see down here we actually have a very small one there but because this one on the right hand side is the one that's the dominant one this will now be suppressed and it probably won't continue to grow. We've also got some other ones. If I turn around you can see there's various growing points trying to come out of this section here. But the main thing that happened, and you can kind of see this here, this side of the tuber 
has sort of bulged a bit more. You can see it's lighter colored bands. And this is actually, this started bulging just before it came back into growth. It started to get a bit bigger. And there was a section in here. It might be hard to show with all the leaves, but I'll try and get a good camera shot of it. So this section here sort of cracked open a bit like an egg. So you can see this line here actually matches up with this line on the side here. This kind of cracked open, then this green growth started to appear, just a bit like a callus. This kind of thickening green growth appeared. It's now round off now, so it's harder to see. It kind of blends in with the rest of the bark. But that growth appeared. There wasn't any obvious shoots on it. And then about a week or two ago, lots of shoots appeared. And you can see we've probably got about five or six main shoots coming from there. And then they all just kind of branch out into these various growths. So instead of the one shoot this year, we've got numerous shoots coming up. So this will make for quite a different plant this year. Normally, as I say, I just get the one shoot, I then train it up on wires, and I let it branch out as it gets bigger. This year, though, we've got multiple shoots. They are a little bit stockier, and they're actually branching some of them a bit more than normal. So what I'm probably going to do is because I'd also quite like to get a time-lapse shot of this, because I did do a time-lapse of this years ago, but I'd like to try and get another time-lapse shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it under the grow lights. That will keep it a little bit bushier, and I'm just going to get a time-lapse shot of it growing. I'm not too worried about the daylight length changing its dormancy phases. So with a lot of plants that are seasonal, they use the daylight cues to know when to grow, when to be dormant. So this, for example, grows in the winter. And if I was to give this long daylight hours or constant light like I need to do with a time-lapse shot, it would probably think it's summer and go dormant again. But I believe this doesn't use daylight as a, as a guide. I think it uses temperature and water levels. The reason I think that is because in the summertime when this is dormant, there's no leaves at all and there's actually no green area on the plant or photosynthetic section. So I don't think it can actually detect the day length. I think what it does is it relies on temperature, a combination of temperature and water levels, and that's how it knows when to grow. I think mainly temperature though, because what I tend to do with this plant is I don't water it at all during the hot dry season when it's, when it's supposed to be dormant. I just give it a tiny trickle, maybe every two or three months just to make sure that the whole plant doesn't dry out completely but to be honest i could probably get away with not watering this for two years and it would be fine and to be honest i've barely watered this in the two years that this has been dormant and then as soon as i see any growth like i have now i start watering it again and then as soon as it gets the water it just really shoots off and as i say this is a really fast growing plant once it gets going so i'll put this under time lapse now luckily the room i'm in at the moment i don't normally heat much and particularly this year because the european gas prices are so high so it's only about 15 degrees celsius in this room maybe a bit lower if we get a cold snap, maybe 12 degrees, which is a great temperature for this to be growing in. So even though it's cold, it's a plant that's used to growing in cold conditions, even though it's a subtropical plant, so it should actually grow quite quickly still. So I'll go ahead, I'll set up the time lapse, I'll leave you guys with a time lapse to watch at the end of this video, and then I'll probably be back again in a few months time when this has got to its full size. By then I'll probably be training it on in the conservatory because it needs the space and I won't be having it under the grow lights. But what I'm hoping for is if I can keep this under the grow lights for quite a while, doing the time lapse, then I can get it to grow even bigger this year. Because as I said previously, the light levels are so bad here in North Scotland that it really struggles to put any growth into the tuber. It tends to put most of the growth into the tuber right at the end of its growing phase. So what this does is it puts all that energy it's stored in the tuber into stems and leaves. It then slowly absorbs the energy from sunlight until it replenishes its tuber. And once the tuber is energy has been replenished then it can start growing the tuber but normally what happens is I don't see any tuber growth until right at the end of that dormancy period because it's normally around March when the sunlight levels get a little bit better and it can actually grow from November until February or March the light levels are so bad here in Scotland that it doesn't really get much energy at all from the sunlight so hopefully with constant light under the grow lamps for the time lapse this will put on a lot more growth this year and I'll get some good sizing up of the tuber. I'll also add, in the previous video I repotted it, so this is really the first growing season that it's had in this new larger pot. That should also help, it should encourage it to uh, grow a bit faster, it's got more space for its roots, more room for nutrient absorption, and so I'll probably be feeding this as well. A high nitrogen feed to begin with, just to get all that growth in the leaves and the stems, and then I'll switch to a feed high in potassium, maybe something like a tomato feed, once the, the growth on the top half stops, and then I'll be focusing on its growth into the tuber, which requires a bit more potassium and phosphorus than the, in the top half. So that's all for this video. As I say, I'll see you guys in a few weeks or a few months' time, where it's at full size, and we'll see how big the, the stems get this time.
So it's now four months later, and as you can see from that time lapse, it hasn't grown a huge amount more since that time lapse. I was hoping for a bit more leaf growth this year, but I think maybe because it was waiting for a whole two years in the dormant phase, I think it had probably lost a bit of energy in the in the cordex over that two year period. So not quite as big as I was hoping for this year, but reasonable growth. The other problem I had was I had a very bad aphid infestation on this around about December, January time when it was just finishing its, its leaf growing phase. That took a lot of energy out of the plant. So it didn't really start growing the cordex until the last two months. But it's been growing quite well now. I've had the grow light on it the whole winter and now that it's spring it's also quite sunny for it. So it has grown for quite a long time this time. Four months is pretty good going. The temperatures are really quite cold in the conservatory. Because of the, the gas prices at the moment I can't really afford to heat it to a high temperature. So it got down to about three or four degrees on several occasions in the conservatory when we had cold spells of minus 15 outside. And it was probably never above 10 degrees for most of winter, but it still grew quite well. And as I'll show you in a minute, the cordex has grown a reasonable amount as well. Now, as I say, it's warming up now. We're getting a few days where it's over 20 degrees Celsius in the conservatory. It will be soon up to 30 degrees by the end of April, beginning of May. And this will definitely go into dormancy then. So I've decided to show you this now. So just bear in mind, this cordex will continue to grow for a few more weeks. But this is just to show you the leaves at the full extent, because if I was to show you the cordex at the end of this video, the leaves would look really horrible because they'd all be going yellow and dying back. But the cordex will grow a little bit more. So I'll zoom in now on the cordex and show you how the growth has been. So starting at the front here, there's actually been very little growth at all. I think this is because the growing point used to be here at the, the edge or in the middle, and the new growing point is at the far side. So this side of the cordex has really put on very little growth at all. So you can see on here the growth hasn't been huge. The way that it works is when it grows slowly it has these darker bands and the lighter bands is when it grows quickly. So you can see it's quite dark even into the, the deep into the cracks. And there's a tiny bit of lightness in the cracks. They've probably only grown one or two millimeters in every single crevice here. So a very slow growth. But what I'll do now is I'll take you around to the back of the cordex where all the growth has been occurring this year. So normally it kind of grows all over quite evenly but this year it's much more one-sided because the growing point isn't in the middle it's on the edge of the cordex so if i turn that round you will see now that it is less of a round appearance and it's getting a bit more elongated in this direction whereas before it was perfectly circular it's now getting more of an on kind of oval shape so it's a little bit trickier to show here because most of the growth is right where there's a lot of leaves but i'll try and get get this filmed for you so we can zoom into this section here you'll see that it really has grown quite a lot in this area so you can see in this part of the cordex where it started growing this year was this dark section here and you can see how much space there is until this light section and i can see it's still actively growing because there's actually green right in the crevice there when it's sowing green that means it's actively growing and it's still getting larger once this goes dormant in a few weeks time that green area will just kind of uh, tone down and it'll become kind of like a, a dark line because that will be the end of the growth and it'll slow down So at the moment they say that the fast growth is light color and then when this slows down It'll go to a dark color as it, as it slows down and then you can you'll have a band a bit like this Which again will push out in the next growing season and the other thing that's interesting about this year Is we've got like a new growth coming out the top where all the new shoots came from So it is a little bit tricky to show just because it's right in amongst the leaves here But you can see there's all this kind of there's this, there's this new kind of knobbly section with much thinner crevices That's a new bit that's kind of just grown on the top there So the uh, the pattern is certainly going to change after this it has always been quite a nice looking cordex But after this there will be a little bit of change. I think it will still look nice though Let's say a little bit more elongated there, but um it's just going to add a bit more character to it, I suppose. So that's all for this video, this video update. We'll probably have to wait another year until I do another video update. What will happen now with the warmer weather is this elephant foot vine will go dormant. It will stay in the conservatory over the summer months, so it's nice and hot to ensure it knows it's summer and it's the dormant period. I'll also completely stop watering. Once most of the leaves start to go yellow, I'll completely stop watering and let the whole thing dry out. Over the summer, I'll just give it a tiny bit of water every now and again, but mostly I don't water it at all, just a few drops, maybe once every month or two, and that's all I give it. And then I really wait until autumn, when I start to see a little bit of growth, to bring it back into growth. So as I say, this will be dormant now for the whole summer, and it will probably start growing again around November or December time, but it does vary a lot, as I say, it is quite random with the dormancy. And if I'm unlucky, it could be another two or three years until it grows again, but hopefully, it will just have a short dormancy and it will start growing kind of September, October time if we're lucky.